Okay, everyone, cheer up. This is the last speech. <laughs> Not the head boy's speech. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> Bear us for a few more moments. So we have uh, Anup Singh Ji, Chairman, Arun Khanna Ji, Dr. Jagpreet Singh Ji, Headmaster, who we heard just now along with Anup Singh Ji. We have Arun Prakash, I beg your pardon, Arjun Prakash, the school captain, Jaswinder Bulji, Amit Sani, Vinayak Bhagana Ji, Sri Ravi Singhi Ji, Ankur Behel, we have uh, Sri Samir Dhingra, Mr. Sanjeev Sapra, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor, the board members who are here, the parents and grandparents who are here, all the DOSCOs who are here and all the students and faculty who are here. Congratulations first for your 89th Founders Day. Congratulations. <laughs> Firstly, let me tell you, it is uh, my singular honor and I'm humbled to be here in this August gathering your school is history in every corner. Your school alumni are army chiefs, military generals, political leaders, businessmen, and what have you. And for you to allow me to come and speak to you on your Founders Day, I'm truly humbled. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> so my dad was in the army. And uh, when he used to be out on exercise, kids used to be alone. So his buddy, a soldier, used to come and put us to a bed. And he used to every day tell a story. His only condition was, Ki hunkara bolte rana. Hunkara is, keep up with me. Right? Don't let it be a one-way interaction. Just keep saying, hmm, yes, or whatever. Just so that I know that you're not sleeping. <laughs> I had uh, a wonderful interaction today with uh, the faculty, uh, some of the prefects and house captains. I just loved it, absolutely. I've been here in Dehradun earlier. My, of course, Indian Military Academy. My battalion was here not too far. The Gadi Kent, which is just a few kilometers from here. I used to also come and play basketball in the basketball courts of Dune School. So I was representing the army team and uh, we used to have uh, competitions with the ONGC team and of course the uh, Dune School team used to be there as well, as well as Vellum Girls team. And I could see the massive cheering the Vellum Girls used to cheer for you and not for us. That's the, I think, the privilege of being from Thun School, right? <laughs> Allow me to first say that uh, you guys are the best. You know that. So you are already on a pedestal. The school itself, coming to the school itself, you are on a springboard. But whether you want to use that spring and launch yourself even higher is up to you. You have an opportunity. But to use that opportunity is up to you. Now, how many of you are backbenchers from school? How many? Raise your hands, please. Yes or no? Plenty of them. I can't see because uh, the light is in my eyes. If, if there are backbenchers, say a big yes. yes. Fabulous. You make me feel so comfortable. <laughs> and tell me, let, tell me, now all you students, if so many people are backbenchers, next time they tell you to do something in your studies, you please tell them to back off. <laughs> if a backbencher can be here standing and speaking, Right, you guys can do wonders then. 
Forget about my achievements. Forget all these achievements that they read out. If I was young, if I was young and I was listening to those achievements that Rajyavardhan, you're going to achieve this, this, I wouldn't believe it. But this, these things happened, right? You're going to, you have to make them happen. I'll tell you how. I was also in a school where my fees was 15 rupees for three months. And even that used to get reimbursed, okay? So if I'm here speaking to you with all my achievements, you can absolutely do wonders. Now I bumbled along when I was, a, I was in junior classes, I have to admit. I just bumbled along. Didn't know where, which direction we were going, but we just kept going. But one thing I was very passionate about was uh, I had to win my sports matches. Uh, that's one thing I was really, really serious about. If you ask me today that which are the tournaments you would remember, I would place my competitions of class A versus class 4B along with my Olympic performance. I'm telling you, do, wouldn't you remember that? You know, in your school days, you would remember some of the tournaments, some of the matches. It was World War Three. <laughs> Very important. So those are the things that I, I lived for. But what did it come to? If you try and analyze what did it come to and how did it change me was basically we all want to be heroes. We all want to be heroes in a class. We also we all want to do well. It's just that at what point of time and for what subject do you want to become a hero, right? That's where you put in your effort. And so over a period of time when, uh, well, they would ask questions and, you know, I wouldn't know the answers. So somehow I realized that I'm missing out on being a hero here. So that's where academics came in. And, and I, did, I don't even see it as academics. I hate academics, right? But I love knowledge. So I started seeing it as I need to know what they're asking. So if they ask me, I should be able to answer that. And it, th this is how all of it started. So when I went to NDA, class 11th, after class 11th, I went to NDA and that's how my life started. Uh, spent a couple of years in the army. Uh, very proud of my time in, uh, in Kashmir. Uh, the, the camaraderie, the bond, everything we had. Uh, I remember we had just gone into Kashmir and of course there was uh, anti-terrorist operations were on. Um, our hands were used to be on the trigger all the time. So you could, you could sense how sensitive the environment was. And I was, uh, I was 24 years old. As a 24-year-old, I was leading 120 men where the situation was life and death. And I told them there, I had them sit like this right in the beginning. And I told them that there's only one welfare that I will do for you. There's only one welfare I will do for you is to take you back alive to your wives and your family. But for that, you got to give me your every single hour. You got to give me your sweat and blood and everything. And we literally operated like ghosts there. If it was raining, if it was snowing, we were out in the forest. The terrorists started fearing us. So that's how we, they were the ones who were at the receiving end and not the army. And so why I tell you this is... Why I, why I tell you this is that the tactics of the army when we were, when we were being taught was like a 20-page tactical book. And I remember telling my instructors, I said, this is just 20 pages. I'm sure the enemy would also know about it. But he said, but every single sentence can be applied in a different way. So those 20 pages you can then apply them in different ways and you can outwit your enemy in multiple ways. It's how you live your life. And I'm coming back to the springboard again. And I, I'll connect it to the... Uh, so when I, when I started shooting, we didn't have all the resources. They were Americans and Australians and they had a swagger. They would walk into the field wearing all the best track suits. And before we even shot the first shot, we had already lost the competition because of the mental thing. They had the coaches and everyone, the best masseurs, psychologists and coaches. But then I gradually realized, and it gets connected to your school. You're in the best school. You're on a springboard. Like those guys had the best coaches. But the coach can only show you the path. It's another thing to walk the path.
when I see all of you, I see young boys who can be molded. At this point of time, tell me all of you, wouldn't you like to be like a sword of steel? Would you? Yes or no? Hello, boys. Yes or no? Wouldn't you want to be the one who, who is the best when you're standing in a group? Would you want to be that? Wouldn't you want to be a hero wherever you are? To be that, you got to consciously build yourself now. You could build yourself with acquiring knowledge whenever you want, day or night. You could, you could build it by um, you improving your communication, right? There are various methods of really making yourself the best. Now, I know that when Anupji was speaking and uh, the headmaster was speaking, there are a couple of things. And one of the things was, it's only academics that is required to, to do well in life. And I was sitting there and thinking that, you know, half an hour of sport actually teaches you many, many months of experience of a normal life. You get into the field, you, you train, you, you analyze the opponents, you analyze gaps, you, you tackle the ball all the way and just when you're about to score, you pass it to somebody else, right? The whole ability to lead the team, ability to sit out at some point of time, the sacrifice, the team bonding, all of this, and most of all, you lose the match. But again, you come back tomorrow to win it. Or you win the match and it goes above your head and next day you get thrashed. All of it is a learning. If in my career, I've learned the most is because of all the failures that I've had. I've lost a thousand times. I've lost a thousand times in, if you, if anyone of you ever sees my interview of 2004, actually I'm saying that, that I lost a thousand times, but today no one talks about my failures. And so, a lot of us don't even start doing something. Because either we want to be too prepared or we are fear, fearing the failure. Now, anybody who doesn't start, is as it is lost. I, if you see my, I mean, God's been kind. Like I said, I'm absolutely normal. God's been really kind. I've had experience of literally three careers in my life. A full military service, uh, a full uh, athletic life, and now a half political life. So, I mean, to do all of this is, uh, is, is certainly God's blessing. But uh, all of this teaches us multiple things to be able to give our best. Along in a career, when I was shooting, there was many occasions, and, I, and I, like, I'll quote this book. I think it's Malcolm Gladwell. Isn't it Outliers? Anybody who's read it? Malcolm Gladwell, right? Now, he writes in his book, and it's so brilliantly written, and I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a case of, uh, as an example. He writes that of all the singular performances that you read about, of, uh, let's say, an, an, an individual Olympic medal. There are many, many people who behind the scenes, unknown to others, help that person achieve that goal. So in your life, repo is very important. You create a repo and repo is literally when people say, oh, he's like me. Isn't he like us? So the moment people say, oh, he's somewhat like us, means you built a repo, means that person is willing to help you. Now, um, the difference between uh, one year and two years is hardly any difference. In the National Defense Academy, six months of difference used to be like uh, a life's difference. Right? But later we realized we were calling all our friends who were six months junior, one year junior, four years junior for help. Right? Because it's always a teamwork. So when you grow, when you're growing in your school, remember when you pass out and you are at some place, how would you want your juniors to remember you? What is that one singular memory that you've left with your juniors that they will remember you with? 
if it's a bitter memory where is the repo if it's a good memory then that repo is going to be good so this is the time that you utilize all the facilities there which are there in your school and like a true leader build a repo with your juniors with your seniors help the seniors why not they are your seniors after all similarly help the juniors in the army we used to have this uh, saying a senior never remembers he is yes he is a senior and a junior never forgets he is a junior and so that bond will always be perfect i have this opportunity here to also be able to if you allow me to address the parents do i have your permission please i've been a parent as well. i am a parent as well and uh, they don't train you to be parents right there's no school which trains you to be parent and there's no book which can actually train you because every every boy every girl is different so uh, me and my wife uh, we, we had a children and learned over a period of time but i think you know uh, it's always better to get a more uh, talented wife right everybody here has a more talented wife yes or no had to be yes it has to be yes right yeah so my wife educated me and this is uh, uh, an unsolicited advice to you would you want the communication with your sons or daughters to be perfect yes or no hello yes or no yes. now for that the only condition is that we don't judge them we are very quick to judge them we are very quick to pass uh, uh, our uh, suggestions to them uh, and, and when we start doing that they stop telling us anything i i learned this that uh, my daughter would say something or my son would say something and i would immediately tell how i if i was in his position what would i do he is not interested in listening to that he is just telling you you be like a blackboard to absorb right black absorbs everything so you absorb everything and at times i tell my wife that why aren't you saying something so she says no the best thing is to say that you are the best judge i'm sure you'll find a way you will be able to find it and and that is a very good <laughs> believe me my son my son is 25 now my son tells all those kind of things to my wife <laughs> you can understand right <laughs> and i tell her this is double standard wo khoon ka rishta hai to usse kuch nahi mere ko hamesha gali yeah i can't do that what he is doing right but that's how it is but the fact what i'm trying to say is that absorb everything you don't have to you don't have to live their life you don't have to remotely guide them firstly they'll not be guided right so what's the point of unnecessarily blocking that child off so the best thing is just listen to them they should feel that i can tell my parent every every everything and they will not judge me that is the best thing that we can do for our children nothing more than that now all of you want to succeed right but my advice to you is you have to write the definition of success yourself society's definition of success is going to really really trouble you right because you will never succeed for society the society doesn't accept a successful person they'll always find faults with you so you have to write your own definition of success and the definition can keep changing right you can have a short term goal right now you can have a long term goal mid term goal or whatever but shape write your own definition of success so that you feel happy like your headmaster said you have to find happiness within yourself when i started uh, my i mean i shifted from uh, the military career to a sports career and that to olympics where at that point of time i'm taking you way back to 1998 at that point of time 
every person said i am mad absolutely mad to leave a secure military career where i would perhaps become a general or whatever and dive into an olympic uh, career where brown skin people don't win it was that that sort of mentality at that point of time and there was no resources available there was no system available and i dived into it just because i thought i'm a good sportsman and i'd come from kashmir where i where i lost a couple of my friends and i i thought that i must live my life as i want to whatever is my passion i should live for my passion because life is short that's the reason i dived into it and i i remember writing to some uh, a very fine gentleman to seek for his to seek his advice and i told him that there is no system there is no resources available i thought that i have some friends and when i look up to friends for resources there is a there's negativity there what should i do and he wrote a wonderful uh, uh, reply back to me that could help you all of you youngsters here he said that uh, your conditions will keep changing sometimes your conditions will be good sometimes your conditions will be bad but it's not your conditions that will shape your future it is your decisions in those conditions that is going to shape your future your decisions so every day every day you have to take a decision from that day onwards actually i blew up that advice and i pasted that advice all over my room and i i would brush and that advice used to be there on the on the mirror i would study and my advice so what it said that take everything control of everything take control of your day everything don't just give it to anybody for helping you take control of the day and so that become in charge of your life like you all keep saying nobody else should be in charge of your life right you don't want the headmaster to be in charge of you you don't want the school uh, school master or whatever isn't it yes or no boys yes please yes <laughs> yes or no i i can't hear i'm a shooter yes or no i still can't hear do you want to be in charge of your life yeah. are you sure you want to be in charge of your life yeah. okay then be in charge of your life right be in charge of your life shape your life it is your life it is not your parents life it is not your grandmaster gr grandfather's life it is not your headmaster's life it is not your board's life it is your life you have to be control of your life so change it all right thank you